It's time for some more The Magic Trap. We are on chapter 10. Chapter 10 is called Proscenium Arch. Proscenium Arch is a noun. It's the arch in a theater that separates the stage from the audience. It's often where the curtains hang. The rabbit seemed to be okay, although Evan couldn't help thinking that if Jesse hadn't said the word rabbit to their dad, the poor animal would have roasted alive in the hot trunk. Jesse promptly named him Professor Hoffman. He had snow white fur with streaks of gray and a serious face, which made him look like a professor. The inside of his short upright ears was the color of bubble gum. When Jesse and Evan ran to the back porch to tell their dad that the rabbit was okay, he looked at them strangely. Of course it's okay. Why wouldn't it be? Why do you two always worry about everything? Your mother too. It's as if you like, or want bad things to happen. Sometimes bad things do happen, Evan thought, but he didn't say it out loud. He didn't want to sound as if he wasn't tough, like his dad, who had been to war and had seen really horrible things. Their dad hadn't brought any of the things you need to keep a rabbit, so Evan and Jesse did the best they could with what they had in the house. They lined a clean, large cardboard box with shredded newspaper and filled Evan's old Scooby-Doo cereal bowl with water. Jesse wanted to decorate the box, but Evan said decorations wouldn't be safe. Professor Hoffman might eat them. For the next two days, Evan worked intensely with Professor Hoffman and Jesse to prefer, perfect the uh, peering rabbit trick. At first, Professor Hoffman didn't want like going into the wooden box at all. He would kick his legs and paw at the air with his four limbs as if he were trying to swim up and out of the box. He's remembering when he was stuck in the trunk, said Jesse, trying to calm Professor Hoffman by feeding him some lettuce. She still wouldn't touch or hold him, but she liked giving him food. Don't feed him. He's supposed to be working, said Evan, trying once again to get the rabbit to sit still. After a few minutes, they noticed that he had pooped. Jesse ran screaming from the room, but Evan just cleaned it up with a paper towel. And after that, Professor Hoffman didn't mind sitting in the rabbit box anymore. On Wednesday, Jesse showed Evan the latest edition of the 404 Forum, and Evan had to admit it was terrific. The front page article was all about the magic show and explained that this was a show with a real live rabbit and an actual stage. The stage was almost finished being built. Their dad had brought enough two by fours to build a proscenium arch, and he'd also bought yards of red velvet, which they draped over the top of the arch to form curtains. Evan couldn't help wondering where his dad got so much money. And if he had that much money, why didn't he send more of it to them? I'm going to pass them out tomorrow, said Jesse, as Evan handed back the newspaper. And then here's a picture of the newspaper. And it has the article with a picture of Professor Hart, Hoffman the rabbit. Are you sure Mrs. Overton will let you? Asked Evan. Miss Overton had not allowed Jesse to hand out her Valentine's Day issue of the 404 forum too much love stuff. Maybe she won't because we're charging money for the show. It's like advertising. She won't mind. Besides, it's not just about the magic show. I've got an interview with Mr. Franks and a word puzzle and a huge article on the weather station data and the storm. See the whole back page. Did you know they named it? It's called Tropical Storm Annabelle. Hmm. Evan didn't care much about the weather. He just hoped some one would come to his magic show. He had almost perfected the appearing rabbit trick. It would be lousy if no one came to see it. In fact, he could use an audience right now. You want to see me do the trick? Yes, shouted Jesse, immediately jumping into the onto the bed. Can I watch too? Evan turned to see his dad, who had gone been gone for the last hour, in the doorway. When had he gotten back? How long had he been standing there? It made Evan feel nervous. His dad always was good at sneaking in and out of places, but Evan had never quite been able to understand how he did it. One of my professional secrets, his dad always said. Evan swallowed. He felt ready to have Jesse watch him perform, but his dad? What if he messed up? What if Professor Hoffman tried to kick his way out of the rabbit box when he was supposed to be gone? But his dad didn't wait for an answer. He walked right in and lounged on the bed, resting his head against the wall. Evan straightened the prop table so that it was facing his new audience. And he took a deep breath. And now, ladies and gentlemen, he said with a booming voice, 
For my final illusion, I will make a rabbit, a live rabbit, appear out of thin air before your very eyes. He waved his hand at the rabbit box on the top of the prop table. As you can see, I have an ordinary wooden box. The box is empty. Evan opened the top of the box and waved his hand around to show the box that was empty. Now I will take this silk handkerchief. Evan had borrowed one of his mother's scarves, which scarves which he draped over the box so that the front was covered and voila he lifted the scarf and there was professor hoffman sitting in the box his pink nose twitching jesse clapped madly and evan's dad nodded his head in approval that's a great trick he said you performed it really well evan knew he was supposed to act very casual magicians never lose their cool but he couldn't help smiling it had taken him two days to learn how to rest his hand on the box release the secret latch with his pinky finger and lift the silk scarf all in one fluid motion as if he were doing nothing at all. He was glad his dad was seeing him perform the trick now instead of yesterday when he had looked clumsy and anybody could have guessed the trick. But his dad leaned forward. I thought you wanted to make something disappear as your final trick. Yeah, said Evan, reaching into the box and taking Professor Hoffman out. He liked to give the rabbit a piece of carrot every time he did the trick correctly, but it's way harder to make a rabbit disappear than it is to make it up here. Yeah, I bet. That's what makes it such a great trick, right? He's pooping, shrieked Jesse, pointing at Professor Hoffman. Oh, Jesse, stop being making such a big deal, said Evan. So he poops. He's a rabbit, for Pete's sake. I wish he didn't. Yeah, well, he'd be dead if he didn't, so that wouldn't be so great. A dead rabbit? That would definitely spoil the show, huh? Said their dad laughing, but Evan didn't think it was so funny. Hey, put the rabbit down and come see what I got in the back of the car. Evan put Professor Hoffman in his large cardboard box, and then he and Jesse followed their dad out to the driveway. It was starting to rain. Big, sloppy, hot drops fell from the murky gray sky, and Evan thought of Mrs. Overton's warning to keep a weather eye out. What is it? Asked Jesse as the three of them pulled the long cardboard box from the back seat of the Subaru. Evan had the sudden thought that it was the size and shape of a coffin. There were five or six different labels on the box, some of them written in, a, in an alphabet. Evan didn't know. Evan pointed to one of the labels. What kind of writing is that? His dad glanced in it, at it and then back over his shoulder as he maneuvered the box up the front steps. Devan Jerry, probably. At least that's what I'm guessing since the box came from India. You know people in India? I know people all over the world, said his dad, grunting as he pushed open the front door. When they got the box in the kitchen, their dad carefully sliced it open with his Swiss Army knife he kept in his pocket. With each slice of the knife, another side of the cardboard box fell away until they could finally see what was inside. A rectangular wicker basket about the size of a small bathtub. What is it? asked Jesse impatiently. Do you know? he asked, looking at Evan. Wow, said Evan. I've seen a picture of one of those in Professor Hoffman's book. Their dad looked at him strangely. The rabbit has a book? No, different Professor Hoffman, said Evan. Evan ran his hands over the top of the basket. It's got a fake bottom. You flip it over. He grabbed hold of the top of the basket and turned it on its side, but the bottom stayed where it was. It's broken, said Jesse, pointing at the opening. No, said Evan, that's the secret. That's how you make the person disappear because then you unhook this other side. He reached inside and ran his hand along the top edge of the box until he found a small metal latch and unhooked it. The side of the box fell open and covered up the missing bottom. Jesse frowned. I don't get it. I want to see the picture. She ran to get the book. The assistant lies down in the basket. The magician closes the lid. The second fat flap falls into place and looks like the original bottom. The assistant is hidden from view and the assistant is on the ground. 
The magician tilts the basket forward and it looks empty, but the assistant is really under the table, I guess. Looks at Evan. Step one, the assistant lies down in the basket. Step two, the magician closes the lid so the audience can't see. Step three, the magician tilts the basket forward and the false bottom falls out. So the assistant is lying there on the ground. But at the same time, the secret flap, which also looks like the false bottom, falls into place and covers up the assistant. I still don't get it, said Jessie. Evan could tell it bugged her that she couldn't figure out the trick. Here, give me a second to set it up and I'll show you. Evan and his dad lifted the rectangular basket onto the kitchen counter and Evan positioned Jessie on the other side of the room so that she was looking at the basket straight on. First, you open the lid on top and then you have a person get inside. He grabbed a bunch of bananas from the fruit basket and said, just say this is a person. Bananas, shouted Jessie. Yeah, bananas, but in the trick, it will be a person. Then you close the lid and flip the box on its side. Evan turned the box over so that it was resting on its side. Then you open the lid and look. The box was empty. Ta-da, no bananas. How did you do that? Demanded Jesse. I told you, it's a fake bottom. The person hiding behind the box, but the audience can't see that. You're pretty good, Evan, said their dad. Now, if you ask me, that would be a great finishing trip for your show. Make me disappear. Make me disappear, shouted Jesse. Where did you even get this thing, asked Evan. He couldn't believe his dad had found something like this and gone to all the trouble to get it. I just made some phone calls, he said. I knew what I was looking for. I've seen that trick a dozen times in Mumbai. So I called a friend or two, actually. He scratched his chin. Six friends. So that's who you were talking to on the phone all this time. All those phone calls were for this. Some of them. What did you think? The smile on Evan's face was so wide. He thought his face might split in two. You're the best, he said, and rushed at his father, wrapping his arms around him. His dad hugged him and kissed him on top of the head. Let's take it down the porch and you and Jesse can practice. You've only got, what, four more days until the show, right? Together, they carried the basket onto the porch and set it up under the proscenium arch. Evan couldn't believe how real it all looked, just like a professional magician's stage. His father stood on the grass where the audience would be and carefully looked at the stage. There's just one problem, he said slowly. When I saw the trick performed, the person really did disappear. There was a trap door in the floor of the stage, so once you flipped the basket back up, the person slipped away and then reappeared at the back of the audience. It was amazing. He nodded his head thoughtfully. Yeah, I think you should do that. Make a trap door, asked Evan. But, said Jesse, we have to cut a hole in the porch. Their dad nodded. That's what we should do to really sell this trip. Mom would kill us, said Evan. Why? The whole porch needs to be replaced anyway. Look at it. He walked up to the edge of the porch and started pulling on one of the rotting rotting floorboards. Honestly, it's a miracle your mom hasn't been hauled into court yet. Stop that, said Jessie. Her eyes were wide as she watched her dad pull apart the porch, and she was jumping nervously from one foot to the other. You know what, said their dad, I'm going to make some calls and line up a carpenter to put a new porch on. That way, we'll all have all the repair work scheduled before your mom even gets home. It'll be like a little present we give her, a terrific surprise. She'll love it. As gracefully as a cat, he le leapt, leaped onto the porch and walked into the kitchen, leaving Evan and Jesse staring at each other silently. Evan? Jesse sounded scared. What? Don't look at me. He's a grown-up. Evan knew in his heart that his mom would not like any of this. But a trap door? How cool was that? Besides, we'll end up with a new porch. I don't want a new porch. Evan knew that Jesse didn't like change of any kind. She liked things to stay the same. Well, we're getting one, so get used to it. Just like mom said, adapt and evolve, Jess. Their dad opened the sliding door to the kitchen and stuck his head out. He had his cell phone to his ear and was grinning. Hey, look, when your mom calls tomorrow, don't tell her about the new porch. I want it to be a surprise, okay? Before either Evan or Jesse could answer, his attention returned to his phone. Yes, I want to get an estimate. He disappeared back into the house, closing the door behind him. What are we going to do, Evan? Said Jesse. Evan looked at the Indian basket. Practice a lot. That's the end of chapter 10. Chapter 11 is called Heckling.
see if you can find out what that means. 